Hey G-Fans, in further celebration of Godzilla King of Monsters, I've been looking at what I think are the biggest and most powerful versions of Godzilla and other kaiju. When ranking the different versions of Godzilla from the various films and eras, one of the more important factors that goes into finding out who is the strongest is measuring just how much damage they can each do with their atomic breath attack. There have been several forms of Godzilla throughout the years, and some, like the Heisei eras, have had many stages of standard and boosted breath attacks. There's a lot to take in when trying to sort out the offensive capabilities of each one. This is just my list, there is no definitive list out there. But with that said, I'd love to hear how you would rank your own list, or if you agree with my rank. So without further ado, here's my top 10 versions of Godzilla's famous atomic breath attack. Let's start off the list with number 10 where it all began in the Showa era, but not the early days. The Showa era's attack is easily the beginning of the scale, where it was initially a superheated mist-like blast that is said to be about one tenth of the heat of the much hotter standard Heisei era's breath attack. As time went on and Godzilla started to face off with tougher and tougher opponents, the mist became more of a solid blue flame, seemingly having a stronger effect than it did in earlier films. As for the power of the blast, well, in comical fashion, the breath attack would take Godzilla's 20,000 metric tons into the air in order to catch Hedera and retreat. The blast was only somewhat effective against other kaiju until the terror of Mechagodzilla, the last film of the era, where the Big D was able to use it at the end of the movie in order to blow up Mechagodzilla 2. I'm not certain if this was a more powerful version of the standard Showa blast or if Mechagodzilla's explosion is more due to the way it landed with its unprotected head hitting the ground. Either way, let's go from the first G on the big screen to a more recent. Here at number 9 is the Monster vs. Godzilla. To me it's easy to see that the legendary Godzilla is heavily influenced by the show G. Both of them are A-class brawlers and neither relies too much on their common breath. For the Monster vs. Incarnation, it was used as a last resort on the Mutos, possibly due to the fact that the Mutos own EMP was said by director Garrett Edwards to be able to degrade the power of Godzilla's blast. Either way, he used it more in the battles with Ghidorah and King of Monsters. To really see its power though, we need to look back at the climax of Godzilla 2014, where he was able to decapitate the female Muto with the kiss of death. Atomic Fred delivered right down the end of his throat. Further advancing on my list would lead me into the Millennium Era with Godzilla 2000 at number 8 and Godzilla vs. Megaguirus at number 7. In both films, we could see the further advancement of an explosive impact force to the atomic breath attack that began back in the case age. In Godzilla 2000, the atomic blast was eventually able to destroy the Millennium UFO ship as well as do extensive damage to Org itself by blowing chunks of it off from the outside and eventually obliterating the entire kaiju from the inside out. In Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, we would see a similar power to the attack with it eventually getting the best of Megaguirus after landing two main shots that would bring the flyer's lifeless body down in flame. What really sets the G vs. Megaguirus atomic breath attack from the Godzilla 2000 one is its usage against the Dimension Tide Black Hole Orbital Gun. When the mini black hole was fired on Godzilla, he fired his blast into the object, seemingly destroying it with Godzilla disappearing as well. He would later reappear proving that he wasn't pulled into the black hole, yet if you truly understand the physics of a black hole, none of this really makes sense. I know this is a movie monster universe and not real life, but if this were a real black hole, the blast would just be pulled into it, having no effect on closing it. That said, it's still a big movie feat for the attack, placing it here on the list. Let's take a closer look at Godzilla from the Kiryu Saga, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, and Godzilla Tokyo SOS. These two films are really a two-part series, so we're going to take a look at the atomic breath here at number 6 from both films. Here you would see much of the same attributes to the breath attack that we saw in the other Millennium Era movies. The big thing that separates this attack from the latter, however, is the amount of kinetic energy that is carried on into the target, causing more of an impact, giving you that blown back effect that we see in movies when people are shocked. This is clearly evident with Kiryu, a 36 to 40,000 metric ton mecha kaiju, with or without the shoulder weapons, who gets tossed around like a ragdoll with each hit. We can even see further damage when the shoulder pack is destroyed along with one of Kiryu's eyes. 
No other beam attack at this point in the series would knock enemies around like this one, making it a solid choice before we get to the top 5. Moving on to the latest live action Godzilla from Toho Studios and starting off the top 5 list is Toho's most recent take on the big G with Shin Godzilla. This one can be a bit tough to rank because we've never seen anything like it up to this point and we've never seen Shin attack or defend itself against any other kaiju. That said, this may be one of the most impressive looking atomic breath attacks on the list. It begins with perhaps the greatest aggro or area attack of the Godzillas by sending out a concussive wall of flames destroying everything in the area, which would then focus and narrow down to a slicing beam with amazing distance and heat, capable of cutting through and melting steel and cement instantly. To make matters worse, Shin could even fire this attack from its tail, mouth, or its back. The only reason I can't put the attack higher up on the list is that the charge up for the blast is longer than most, and more importantly, once fired, the attack drains Shin, causing a shutdown for cooling purposes. If it's not the most powerful breath attack, it's definitely the most unique, earning it this top 5 spot. For number 4, we're going to have to take a look at the finale to the Heisei era with Godzilla vs Destoroyah. The atomic breath attack of this era was an amazing step forward when compared to the breath attack of the Showa era. The Heisei era was all about successive power-ups to Godzilla that would eventually lead to a nuclear reaction in his heart that would lead us to burning Godzilla. With Burning G, we are looking at what is likely the hottest of the atomic breath attacks of any version of Godzilla. While I don't have direct measurements for most of the other blasts, I can confirm that the Super Flame heat ray, as seen in Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla 2, reached a temperature of 1,200,000 degrees Celsius. Yet as hot as that was, there would be even more powerful blasts in store for Burning G, leading us to the Infinite Heat Ray, or Burning Spiral Heat Ray, that was said to be the most powerful of the era, increasing infinitely in strength each time Burning G would use it. Yet I'd add that infinite may be the wrong term to use here, since this stage is entered when Godzilla's in its final meltdown stage, where its time would be short-lived. So how do we top the temperatures of the Heisei era? Well, we don't, but that doesn't mean there aren't other attacks that are more powerful on my list. And next up on that list is number 3, where we have a Godzilla that wasn't the most durable, yet it made up for it with an amazing atomic breath power. The Godzilla I'm talking about here is the one from GMK, Godzilla Mothra King Ghidorah. This version was not like the other ones, instead it was a supernatural creation that contained the ghosts of those lost to the Japanese in World War II. The ever advancing ghost like kaiju showed no quarter to its enemies, using its powerful atomic breath to tear into mountainsides, killing Baragon in explosive fashion, and later on using the same atomic blast to kill both Mothra and King Ghidorah. The breath attack was so powerful that it eventually led to the demise of Godzilla himself. After suffering a wound, the atomic blast would leak from said wound, causing further damage to the Big G eventually causing a backfire of sorts, blowing up Godzilla, leaving only a beating heart behind it. These atomic breath feats were powerful enough, but the beginning of the film gives us an even more powerful usage of the blast when its off-camera usage causes a mushroom cloud similar to what we would see from a nuclear bomb detonation. This type of force isn't seen again with the breath attack, so it's kind of like the black hole destroying feat, yet impressive nonetheless. And now with only two left, it's time to take a look at the atomic blast as seen in Godzilla Final Wars. In its first usage, we see Godzilla face off with a new and improved form of Gigant. The evil space chicken, who I love by the way, would use its chains to hook into Godzilla, pulling him into its waiting buzzsaw, only to have Godzilla blow its head off in one easy blast. We would then see the same attack blow up both 1998's Zilla along with the Sydney Opera House. Other kaiju like Hedera and Ebera would also meet their doom at the effects of the atomic breath attack. Yet perhaps the top showing for this blast is when it's used on the Gorath asteroid containing Monster X. The beam would be used to destroy the space rock, unleashing Monster X who would take the blast of Godzilla like a champ until changing into Kaiser Ghidorah. Here the four-legged Ghidorah relative would take the upper hand, draining Godzilla of energy until it was saved by Ozaki who would hit Godzilla with a Kaiser power-up, taking the breath attack to another level. 
allowing Godzilla to use its spiral beam to decapitate one of the Kaiser's heads. Godzilla would then use Kaiser Ghidorah's own gravity beams to decapitate a second head before throwing the evil Ghidorah relative into the air using its spiral beam to push the Kaiser out into orbit where the beast is incinerated from the blast, a feat unlike any other to take place in the live action universes. For many of you, the list stops here at the live action films. Yet if you include the animated Earth Godzilla and its atomic beam attack to the list, it easily takes the top spot. In the prequel novels to the films, we learn that the Kaiju's atomic breath was able to take out all of Los Angeles in one single hit. It was even noted that the attack was able to take out and kill multiple Kaiju in one solitary blast. During Operation Great Wall, Godzilla was buried underneath the Himalayas, yet it was able to escape when it used this attack to melt down the mountain range, which contains Mount Everest, the tallest peak on the planet. Even with the beam attack's destructive power, it could still be used with pinpoint accuracy on targets miles away on the ground and even up in orbit. The charge up for the blast took a few seconds, but the power unleashed was well worth the slight delay. Where other beams would melt or destroy rocks, this one takes out entire chunks of the planet and was even capable of closing the portals opened up by the interdimensional King Ghidorah. And that's it for me guys, I had a blast going back and rewatching all the films in order to see which atomic breath attacks stood out above the others. I hope you enjoyed my list and I can't wait to hear if it matched up with yours or how you would rank and change up the list. Your comments, likes, and subscriptions go a long way towards helping the channel grow and I appreciate the support. Thanks again and I hope to see you next time.